How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, and uh, it's been a while since I've shown my hideous face on here, so I thought it'd be about time to show it again, and this time doing so with a punk collection update. I've got five punk CDs here for you today, and we're going to talk a little bit about them. So, without any further ado, let's get this on the road. Now, if you watch Jaxby the Ripper's channel at all, and you've seen her videos recently, she showed off... I think 30 albums for 30 years or something like that. Cool idea, definitely lots of interesting stuff she showed off. And one of the things she showed off was an AFI album, and that was Answer That and Stay Fashionable, which is their first album. I ended up getting that, I think, last punk collection update, but then I finally got around to getting this. This is their second album with Very Proud of You. Lots of good tracks on there. This was back when they were actually like straight up punk. Very good stuff. I I really enjoy their 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 earlier punk material over their kind of I don't know post hardcore kind of emo core whatever stuff. But this one is definitely high up there. Not my absolute favorite of theirs, but it's it's pretty high up there. I may want, may do a ranking of their early material one time, and I'm still planning on doing that OG kind of second wave black metal ranking, where I rank like the five most influential OG black metal bands. Basically, rank the bands one through five. But that's that's for next monday where i plan on starting that new series black metal mondays where i try to talk about black metal in one shape or form on a weekly basis so you guys have some black metal content for you on here but i might do that for these guys at some point but i don't know we'll, we'll see how i'm feeling i don't know what day of the week sounds more punk we'll uh maybe decide that <laughs> anywho I, I really enjoy this one uh very proud of you it's got tons of great songs on it he Who Laughs Last, uh, File 13, Cult Status, Perfect Fit, Advances in Modern Technology, The Secret Ninja, Two of a Kind, Shatty Fatness. Check it out. All right, next is the third album by AFI, which I believe is their hands down best album they've ever released. It's a, it's a shame they didn't do more albums like this because it's, it's fast, it's heavy, it's aggressive. It's punk as hell. Davey Havoc's voice has never sounded better. In my opinion, of course, being more of a fan of their fast punk stuff. I know a lot of people probably say uh, Sing the Sorrow or whatever it was, was like his best vocal performance. But I don't know. I don't really like that style as much as I do as this old punk style. So, yeah. This has like a lot of great tracks on it as well. Three Reasons. A Single Second, Let It Be Broke, Third Season, Lower Your Head and Take It in the Body, New Patron Saints and Angels, Three Seconds Notice, Salt for Your Wounds, just so many good fucking songs on here, Triple Zero, so yeah, that's Shut Your Mouth and Open Your Eyes, AFI's third album, I don't know what year it is because it doesn't stay on here, but it's, it's fucking their best one for sure. Alright, next one is kind of punk <laughs> it's more in the lines of like crust punk mixed with like grindcore or black and hardcore or whatever but this is trap them with their fourth album bliss fucker from 2014 trap them started in 2001 they're from the united states they uh, unfortunately ended in 2017 following the album after this but th this stuff is really really good if you like nails or if you like Funeral Chic or His Hero is Gone, you'll probably really, really enjoy Trap Them. They're, they're amazing stuff. I prefer these guys over Revenge. There's just so much, so much more groove and hooks and something you can actually bob your head to instead of just all out audio warfare, but still gets across that really aggressive, really like, angsty angry jock punk it, it, it's like for the punks that were really testosterone fueled and 
early like into working out and being just really aggressive obnoxious fucking dudes like <laughs> uh, either way really really good stuff this is like i said their fourth album from 2014 bliss fucker definitely check this one out i also have their first album on on vinyl actually called sleep well deconstructor i'm missing the two between that one and the first one they got like three EPs as well too, so there's quite a bit of stuff. The next one is their last album from 2016 called Crown Feral. Once again, Trap Them, excellent crust punk, grindcore, black and hardcore, whatever you want to call them from the United States. I haven't really seen too many people show this off. I think maybe Count Blagrath showed it off and one other YouTuber that I don't care to talk about anymore. Besides them, I haven't really seen too many show this off. There's one other dude that probably has this. I really wish I could remember the name of his channel. He shows off a lot of hardcore and a lot of crust punk and a lot of like metalcore and stuff like that. And no, it's not the punk rock NBA. It's, it's an actual like smaller YouTube channel. Fuck, bud, I wish I could remember your name. If I can think of it after this video, I put, I'll put your link in the description box below so people can check you out, especially if they're into stuff like this and other hardcore and, and, and metalcore and stuff. But yeah, that's some excellent, excellent crust punk. It sucks that these guys broke up. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is or, or what led them ending the band, but Trap Them was fantastic. And I will eventually get the other two albums. So yeah. That was their last effort with Crown Feral. Shout outs to The Electric Dead, by the way. Amazing horror punk band from Ontario. Still need to get your, your CDs. All right, the last one on here is something I've been kind of neglecting for a long, long time. I used to be super huge into these guys. I, I used to listen to them like day in, day out, back when I first kind of discovered them in high school. And they're just really funny really like energetic very bouncing off the walls type of music very add style of music and who i'm talking about is mindless self-indulgence now mindless self-indulgence is a electronic punk slash industrial rock band from new york usa that started sort of in 1997 i guess with the first album tight but technically, Mindless Self-Indulgence started in 1995 with this EP, I'm going to show you here, by Jimmy Yearn himself. He put a few songs together, made with Steve Rye, I believe. And then he, he did some, I guess, lineup changes and whatever, and then eventually named the new band Mindless Self-Indulgence as well. The only thing that really makes a difference is that there's a, a hyphen in between self-indulgence and this, yeah, it's just a self-entitled EP. That, so technically it started in 1995. Very, very rare. Apparently there's only 500 copies of this ever made and that was it. So if you got a copy of this, consider yourself very fucking lucky. And considering how rare it is, I guess I'll show you the inside as well. It's nothing super fantastic or crazy, but yeah. I don't know what the fuck that's all about. There's the liner notes if you want to pause it and read it. It's hard to make out. I apologize. So, yeah, very interesting stuff. This is on Squeaky Clean Soundtrack Incorporated Chip CD 001. I don't know if that's his own little thing that he produced it on or just some other local recording studio, but... Yeah, so I think technically they started in 1995 with this EP, but apparently somehow some, a lot of people consider that to be Jimmy Uringer's first solo EP, but I don't know. It says Mindless Self-Indulgence on it. It sort of sounds like a cross between Mindless Self-Indulgence and Nine Inch Nails, so I guess that's where more of the industrial rock part comes into play. But anywho, the, one, the album I'm talking about today is... How I Learned to Stop Giving a Shit and Love Mindless Self-Indulgence. So, really, really cool stuff. I kind of discovered this a few years after the fact of it coming out. And, yeah, this is from 2000 and... It says 2012. Why do I feel that is wrong? Let's see here. 2012. That can't be right. 
but whatever. It says 2012. I guess it's a lot earlier than I thought. So yeah, this was this is crazy. This I believe is their. Oh my god, this is their fifth album. This thing is funny as fuck. If if you like kind of electronic Nintendo core punk slash industrial rock, and you can stand his hyperactive ADD sounding voice, then this is definitely for you. I know I've shown this the inside of this, but I'm going to show it anyways. Again then you should love this uh, the wife's been recently enjoying this a lot too and see now th that's this 2013 record what the fuck man <laughs> whatever i i was definitely sleeping on this for way too long definitely glad to have a copy of it now really really funny i i need to get the self-titled jimmy uringer album called uringer it's not quite as heavy or or as like extreme as this but it's still kind of got like a rock feel, got that industrial Nintendo Corey feel to it. Yeah, it's a little lighter, but it's still got this kind of tongue in cheek humor that Jimmy Yearn has. So I'm definitely not gonna have to get that Yearn self titled album. And then, well, it's Jimmy Yearn. And then the album's called Yearn I don't know if that's considered self titled or not. But, anyways, gonna have to get that. And then apparently they have a, a, a rarities compilation called pink i guess i'll have to get that i always thought this was the pink album but it's not apparently this is called tighter and it's just uh bonus tracks from the tight album so i guess that's not the pink album whatever they got so many random fucking releases it's hard to keep up with everything that mindless self-indulgence used to release i'm surprised i have half of this shit in there because it's very rare and very expensive some of it like that live in mexico cd or whatever the alienating my audience yeah that wasn't cheap to acquire i remember that being a fucking fistful of cash back in the day so hooray anywho that's it that is my five punk cds for this update hope you enjoyed hope you found something that you liked and hopefully once again i've maybe convinced you to maybe check out some punk if you weren't previously into punk and maybe you discovered your new favorite band because that's the whole idea on this channel for me introducing you to new music and hopefully you discovering something you really really like that's all for me guys for glory for the rebellion and the alliance slamorella out Oh, also, since you've made it this far, I also should say that I now have a Redbubble shop called Slamorella, and you'll see Black Metal Rebellion logos and stuff there. So just go to redbubble.com, search for Slamorella, you'll see a bunch of things there, like United Rebel Alliance merch, you'll see Slamorella t-shirt merch, some Lonely Cadaver stuff, If so if you ever want Lonely Cadaver merch, it's there, and you'll even see the Torturous Endevilment EP artwork on available on a few things. So definitely check it out. Definitely consider picking yourself up whatever from shirts to fucking dresses to, to skirts to mugs to fucking clocks. I don't know. It, it's on everything. There's a lot of merchandise. Be sure to check it out and maybe consider picking yourself something up from there for my Redbubble shop. Helps me out and keeps this channel going. So cheers. Have a good one, guys.